It's the good time rice bowl. In our quarantine stores without going to the store. Hey, look at that. These oysters are perfection. So we'll actually set these on fire and then put the lid down and it does that. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30 foot, 50 year old sailing boat, Marul. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. Just delay our departure, I think. Yeah. I'm not all that thrilled about ice falling from the sky. Um, did you look on the radar? Yeah, this is you know, this is only just a small part of the rain cloud. Oh, it's got an ice cube down my back. Yeah. Well, in light of it starting to hail <laughs> and drop about four degrees, <laughs> it's oh, oh. so today we're looking at a maximum of eight degrees, and um, it, it's not even winter yet. We're on the we're on the line where we we'll have a low come by followed by a high but we're right in the sort of centre of the action. So as each low comes through like this, it slurps air straight off Antarctica mm. and delivers it directly to us with a little bit of warming, it has to be said, but wow, yeah. it's, it's still cold. But then as we get high pressure systems, they give us northerly, so that brings us warm air from the north. So week by week, we alternate between having like 18 no, 19 to 20 degree days. Yeah. And then the very next day, it's this, it's like eight degrees. <laughs> <laughs> With plans to slowly make our way towards Hobart to see if we could refit Marul over winter during the COVID lockdown, we weighed anchor and sailed towards Quarantine Bay on North Bruni Island. <laughs> it's the good time rice bowl. This is an amazing lunch. We're on rations now. But this is one way to make tin fish acceptable. Yep. And uh, last, pretty much the last of the vegetables. So Pasky steamed up some mussels for a soup yesterday, but they had just a bit of grit in them. They had some small pearls in them actually, some mm. little mussel pearls, which aren't really jewelry grade. We didn't feel like eating them. Too but, crunchy for our liking. But it has firmed, it has firmed the meat up enough that we can actually use it as baits. So just, have a cast. Have a cast. Around here there's a lot of flathead that get around, so as long as we move it, we might stand a chance of catching something. Oh. You're on. <laughs> there's a tiny little flathead. He's pretty, pretty angry too. Be free. No hands. No hands. Well, we've done all right this evening. We didn't get any flathead, but we got some blue mackerel, spotty mackerel, and we're just processing them now. And they're actually quite big. And we're feeding some ducks, some carnivorous ducks. Have you ever seen carnivorous ducks? Yeah, look.
look at that. Pretty big. Bad. Are you happy? We're rich again? We are rich. <laughs> Doing the little tail flick. You guys are greedy. <laughs> oh, they're so fast. They get it? Oh, oh. oh yep, yeah, that footy. This is what we call. A very big success. Well, like so many things, even the reserve is closed, so it's getting a little bit harder for us to get off the boat and get some exercise. Yeah, because this isn't a national park, we thought, oh, maybe we've got a chance of being able to visit, but no. <laughs> so, I think what we'll do is we'll just, we might bring our refit. Yep, um, forward a bit. Forward about three weeks give the boat a much needed interior paint because I don't think there's been a coronavirus run on interior <laughs> boat paint. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Although the reserve was closed, that didn't stop us from harvesting some of the local oysters. These oysters are perfection. Look at that. <laughs> yum, yum. These Pacific oysters are an invasive species here in Tasmania. There is no bag limit, so we harvested several dozen as we plan to preserve some so we can enjoy a seafood treat whilst living on land to refit Marul. So we're going to grab the oysters, we're going to smoke them, and then we're going to smoke some bacon as well. We had some pork belly curing and salt and sugar. <laughs> That's a lot of smoke. So we went and got these nice bark free hardwood bits of wood. They're Australian gum trees and as long as you get the actual hardwood and there's no eucalyptus oil or anything on them, mm, they're really really great for smoking a lot of the time. They're a really great hardwood. There was a lot laying along um, you know, the coastline but any seawater that touches them, um, we found out that you can actually give yourself dioxin poisoning if you use driftwood or stuff that's been soaked by seawater. So we went up into the bush and we got some nice clean stuff. So we've got all sorts of stuff. We've got little chips that I made with the machete. These, these little beauties. So we'll actually set these on fire and then put the lid down and it does that. Pass me fresh ones? Yep. and the pig is in, I was going to call it the swine. Swine is in. <laughs> the swine is in. And so I've just, we've pulled them off the shelves and we've put them in a jar here and just covered them in some Flinders olive oil that we got on Flinders Island. I reckon they're going to be quite tasty. Look at these little guys. And while Troy was smoking and I was making lunch, he got busy catching more fish. Nice little mackerel. That's a, that's a good one for seeing why they're called blue mackerel. They're really oh, so beautiful. Yeah, whatever you. <laughs> depending mm. on how you look at them. So these these are actually this is the legal size of a flathead, but these are better recovery. And, oh, look at how they can smoke it. Yeah. They're actually really better recovery than a flathead. <laughs> and we actually like the flavour a bit more. Um, but we like oily fish, whereas a flatheads, I think, is a more of a traditional Aussie taste. You know, yeah. A, a very mild, mild white flesh. White flesh. Yep. But these are delicious. Our quarantine stores. Yeah. Without going to the store. Look at ducks.
We could pretty easily have put duck on the menu as well. <laughs> We're not going to. <laughs> We're not going to, are we? We're all ducks. So those little mackerel, the bloodline, they're, they're, they're not worried about being cannibals. Yeah, so I cut out the bloodline to make um, lunch. And it's the best bait for catching Yeah, it's really good because the bloodline's got all the, the bones, pin bones in there as well. Because they're such an oily fish, mm. I, I reckon the top of the pops are omega-3. But also that oil, just that smell spreads underwater. So everything wants to eat it, including themselves. Mm -hmm. Which is a bit rough, but what are you going to do? <laughs> well, it's been a busy day. We've, uh, we've been provisioning up what we can. So we've got some smoked mackerel and we've smoked our bacon. Now what's going to happen? Uh, I've been, I put about 10 fillets of mackerel um, covered in them in salt about three hours ago. So I'm going to rinse them off now and pat them dry. We're going to pat them dry and then we're going to cut the bones out of them. Yep. And the bloodline. Yep. And then we're going to put them in, like make a pickling solution for them. A bit like roll mops. Make roll mops, yeah. So today is going to end up with some smoked fish for future cooking, some bacon for eating as quickly as we can, to be honest, um, and then some pickled fish as well, which and should go nice when we have beer again. Also, we've got the smoked oh, and oysters. We've got smoked oysters as well. But we also collected like 500 grams of oyster meat too. Right. And we probably have a couple of kilos of mackerel fillets as well. So we've done our we've done our job on uh, feral oysters. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of the time the weather the weather is such that we're sort of confined inside. So because the last days were so nice, we sort of put a Today bit of food on board. Today was 20 degrees. <laughs> yeah, we put a bit of food on board. So it's our version of going to the shops, really. Nice and old fashioned. Your hands are quite greasy. They are oily fish. Oh, that is no oil added. <laughs> that is no. just pure fish oil. No salt or anything, hey, just smoke and fish. Just smoke and fish. For my part, I have just rinsed off all of the salt over those mackerel fillets that were curing for the last three and a half, four hours. Now I'm just going to pat them dry and then cut the pin bones out and take off the little shiny membrane. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to put them in a nice pickling solution. After salting the mackerel and patting them down, the fillets firm up quite considerably which we find makes them much easier to handle and process than when they are raw. Blue mackerel don't have any scales, but they do have this outer membrane, which is particularly delicious when crispy fried on the fillet, fresh in the pan. However, we prefer to remove it when we're pickling as it can make the end product quite chewy. To remove, gently rub your fingers around the outside of the fillet to see if you can ply away this skin from the iridescent underlayer. Sometimes a little bit of the silvery blue shine will come off with it, but that doesn't really matter. As these fish are quite small, I cut the fillet into two pieces on either side of the pin bones. For larger fish, we would try and keep the fillet whole, but with fish this size, it is quite fiddly. Plus, we had the added bonus of being able to feed the ducks a treat in the morning. To make the pickle solution, finely slice one onion, pour three cups of vinegar into a saucepan. Add two tablespoons of sugar, two teaspoons of peppercorns, two teaspoons of mustard seeds, five bay leaves, and your chopped onion. Heat the mixture over the stove until the sugar is dissolved, and then allow to cool at room temperature. Place the prepared fillets in clean jars, layering with chopped onion, making sure you leave lots of space between them to pour the pickling solution. And that's it, delicious free range pickled mackerel. Preserved like this, pickled blue mackerel can last up to two months in the fridge. The following day we found a berth for Marul in a nearby marina where we could stay for the winter to carry out her long overdue interior refit. As we headed across the channel in the chilly weather, we couldn't believe our luck. A long hot shower was waiting for us under the rainbow. Thanks for watching the video this week and if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit that like button. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.